This video is intended for mature audiences that may be, for the very first time, launching into a DIY project um, like uh, hang a picture on drywall or install a shelf on drywall. And these devices are the ones that we're going to be exploring. Which ones are better for you know, hanging heavy things? Which ones are better for hanging not so heavy things? And your toolkit consists of, in your drawer in the kitchen, a hammer, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, possibly some string, some kind of measuring device, and this probably you don't have. That's a magnet and this is a stiff piece of wire and if you want to get really really technical you might want to get this a lunch baggie with some colored water in it you say well, what in the world do you do with that well I'm going to show you because we're going to explore and actually I'll show you how I put some of these in uh, the different kinds of um, anchors for hanging weight on a wall and just like the little video I just ran in front of this rant um, the amount of weight these things can hold when they tell you on the package which they will they do uh, is for straight down it's for a vertical load not a horizontal load we have got to make sure we understand that um, when we get into putting these things in I'll point this out uh, that uh, these are just guesstimations on the amount of weight. This one, see, says 75 pounds. This one over here says 100 pounds. This one says 3 pounds. So we'll look at the technical aspects of what that really means. And we're going to use only these tools right here because I'm assuming you're a newbie. You're watching this to figure out, okay, which ones of these things should I use? And what tools do I need? Not very many to install stuff on drywall. So that's where we're going to go. Just a moment until I move over to my high-tech simulation of an interior wall. And here's my interior wall mock-up right here. Here's my drywall right here. Here's the stud that the drywall is fastened to with uh, drywall screws. Of course, you wouldn't be able to see any of these because this would be painted or something on it. Uh, and this is the 2x4 or the stud that the uh, drywall is mounted to. And then back here behind this is the other side of this interior wall, which also has drywall on it. All right. So that's a typical layout. The thing um, that we'll be dealing with uh, at some point is that the stud or the 2x4 that's in here, it's 16 inches away from the next one, typically. They're 16 inches on center. So I would have a place where if I try to put something in here, it's going to be very different. A hanger of some type will generally be very different than something I put over here because I'm between the studs. The one hanger that doesn't make any difference and doesn't really care is the stick-on types right here. You got a little piece of sticky stuff that you stick on the wall. And then you stick this on that. Boop. And there's a lot of variations on this. These are really wimpy. This one here, three pounds. So you don't want to hang much more than a dish towel or something on it. But they're easy to do and you can stick them any place you want. Um, I'm going to use this little wavy line as uh, in the demo for where I want to put uh, the various kinds of anchors. All right. So you can put these any place, no big deal. You don't need to know much of anything except how much weight do you want to hold. And when you read the back of this, what kind of a surface will it go on? Because there's lots of variations. I found some of these that were listed up to 40 pounds. But when you read the back side of it, it says you can't put it on like wallpaper. As a matter of fact, you can't put it on any kind of porous surface. You have to put it on like a piece of glass, maybe your shower door or something. Why would you want to hang some something 40 pounds off your shower door? But anyway, uh, you need to make sure that the particular one you're using for just sticking things on um, actually will work where you want to stick them on. Yeah. So I'm not even going to do this one. It takes 30 minutes to actually go through the whole process. 
So that's the easiest one. And you don't really care about much of anything except the surface. Will, will the sticky thing go on that surface? All right. Let's move on to the next type, which is I'm going to stick it kind of into the drywall. Right? It may or may not go all the way through, but I'm going to stick it into it. Let's look at some of those. Okay, here's where I have to get a little bit into the tech weenie stuff, is that uh, anything other than the stick-ons that are going to go into the drywall, even a nail, something like that, um, you need to know a couple of things to verify, one, that they'll go in uh, adequately, and two, that they'll hold even close to what their rating is in terms of poundage for holding up and down weight like this, right? They never tell you what they'll hold coming out this way. Let's say like a shelf. Yeah, let me give you an example. Let's say I was going to take this and I'm going to make a shelf out of it and I stick it on right there. Well, I'm going to have some holds in here and then into the drywall. Well, they'll tell you it, it holds 10 pounds this way. But once you have this cantilevered out here, how much can you put out here? Well, sure, it won't be 10 pounds. So some techy stuff about this um, that we have to explore just a little bit. And the two things are, um, where is the stud? Because this is all painted. I don't know where the studs are. Well, there's a number of different machines you can get. They're expensive that can tell you that. We don't have those tools because we're newbies and all we have is the stuff that was in the kitchen drawer. So how am I going to find out where in the heck the studs are? And the other thing I need to know is how thick is the drywall? Because this stuff comes in a number of different um, thicknesses. The typical one is half inch, but we don't know that. Because the, the hangers are rated almost always to be on half inch drywall. So, if we want to get close to the numbers that they're telling us on their packages, we need to know those two things. Now, the easiest way, without going out and buying a fancy tool to find out where the studs are, use a magnet. And you just drag the magnet around until it, oh, it sticks right there. That tells me there's a drywall screw right there. And there should be another one directly down below it someplace. You know, it depends on how many they put in. So that'll tell me where my stud is. You okay with that? All right, so I got one part of it, the stud, where it is. The other part of it, how thick is the drywall, is easily discovered by using my grabby thing and a stiff piece of wire. So now that I know where the, where the drywall uh, is attached to the stud, I can just take this stiff piece of wire and push it in until it won't go any further. Then hold the pliers up really close, pull it out, take your whiz-bang measury thing, and look here, it's a half inch. So that's half inch drywall. That's good because you'll find out that most of these devices will reference a half inch drywall. Now, what if you didn't want to have that little tiny hole right there? And you're, you're going to use one of these anchors and you're going to put it like someplace along this line right here. Hmm? So now you want to test for drywall thickness there. So let's go over here because I'm going to put a, eventually uh, an anchor in here. So I don't care if I have a tiny little hole. So again, I take my pliers hold it, push it in. Uh, what happened here? I hit something. Let's pull it out. I should have been able to go all the way from here over to the other wall. And if you measure that, I think you'll find it. It's about four inches. Let's see. To the inside of that, to the outside of where we are, it's four inches. So this thing should have gone all the way through when I was pushing it four inches, right? 
Let's see. Not even close. That means I've hit something back there. Let's see what it is. Through the mo modern technology I have, I can let my vice turn. And guess what? There's a pipe there. Oh, that's not good. Because if I were to take something, which I've seen people do, because the instructions for some of these say you need to drill a big honking hole right there, right? Right there where I was going to put that thing. Big old hole. Guess what? You just flooded your apartment because you drilled a hole in a water pipe. Or worse yet, big old drill bit out here. You went in and there's some Romex in here and that drill bit went into that Romex. Don't be, don't be inserting these hangers that have to go in or through the drywall without investigating what is behind there. Hmm? There, we got the first part of it. All these hangers I'm going to show you, you need to know that there's nothing behind here that's going to be damaged or hurt you when you do something as simple as stick an anchor in here to hold up a picture. Now that we have that technical information, how thick the drywall is and where the studs are, let's start putting um, some examples of hangers up. Hangers up? Yes. Let's go to this. Basically, these are just uh, fancy nails, right? They're easy to put in. Unfortunately, they're easy to take out, too. They have a little, kind of a little washer-looking thing on here, and you put them in at an angle like this. All right, so let's stick one in. I hope my vice will hold steady. <laughs> Boom! There you go. And it's up on an angle. You can put a little, you know, something on here, like a picture frame or something. And that little one right there says that um, it's good for 10 pounds. See that right there? It says 10 pounds. 10 pounds right there. It goes all the way up to 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. Look, there's a big ones over here. But read the back. See if I can get this up where you can read it. Warning. Ratings are based on hangers nailed into studs and for comparative purposes only. Choose a weight rating that greatly exceeds the object to hang. Yeah. So, how much will this hold when it's not in a stud? I have no idea. There's a whole bunch of videos that uh, guys are, you know, doing tests. When it says 100 pounds, can I hang it on there? And typically what happens is uh, even at the rating, like 100 pounds, it'll start pulling down. And often that's because they didn't look at it's got to be on a stud. Now this one's okay as far as what it's coming, what it's doing on the back side of this, because it's very short. And let's see if I can turn it around. It's very short, and it doesn't actually come through the drywall. But when you get into this big one right here rated at 100 pounds. Look how long that nail is. Now, I know it's going to go through here, so it's not that, that total length of the nail is not going to be um, what it appears to be. But it says 100 pounds right here, so if I put it out here, is it going to be rated really at 100 pounds? No, because once again, it tells you it's based on hanging it on a stud. And this is possible depending on where that pipe was. Was it dead on in the center? Did I really have this much room between something coming in here? Yeah, I don't know, because I haven't thrown this one in there. But if you put it in like that, it looks like it might actually hit that, even where this is. So you really needed to check to make sure that if you use something as big as this and you didn't put it in the stud to get the 100 pound rating, you stuck it out here, that you didn't hit something in the back because that's a pretty long nail. Okay, so that's a, that's a really simple one. 
I know lots of us have used these. I have in the past. Um, and I never read the back of it. <laughs> but what's the likelihood that you're going to want to hang anything that's, that's directly on the stud? Well, first you had to know where the stud was. Uh, and you got 16 inches of, of clear stuff here, drywall, to stick things on. So the chances are you're going to put one on a stud and then another one not on a stud. And yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Okay, let's go over to one that you have to uh, do an insert or you have to screw it in. And there are a lot of variations on the ones that you have an insert. Here's, here's one right here for um, conventional quarter inch clear mirror clips for one quarter inch mirrors. Doesn't tell you how big a quarter inch mirror is going to be, but who knows. So it doesn't actually give you a rating back here. I could never find that about oh, how heavy can the mirror be. But it uses uh, these little inserts right here. And then some little pieces where the, the um, mirror gets held up. Does this work? Sure. Uh, lots and lots of people use these. I've used these too. Right? But the issue is you have to put an insert in here. You can't just push it in like that. Right? Like the nail type. So that means you have to uh, drill a hole. Yeah. Dangerous. Or if you got the right kind of screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> You can uh, use uh, one of the bits. Let's see. Uh, and I'll, I'll use this one over here because it happens to be laying out here. Um, these insert types are typically, they've got little uh, ridges here. So when you push this thing in, it doesn't particularly want to come out. And typically they're split. See that split right there? So when you put the screw in here, after you get it in the drywall, it will force this open. Right, so give you more traction inside of the plaster. But keep this in mind, these are held by a friction in the plaster, aided by having these little grooves. So that limits how much weight these can hold also. You need to, once again, reference uh, how much you're gonna be hanging on this stuff. So can I put one of these things in without breaking out the old, because. Mm -mm -mm, you don't have one, at least not in your kitchen drawer. So I'm going to stick one in here. I'm going to use that little hole right there that I checked because there's something back, back there. I don't think this is going to bother it much, but so guess what? I'm just going to drill a hole. Let's uh, see, is that big enough? Mm, nope. So I'm going to turn this around. These are really cool screwdrivers because there are actually four screwdrivers in one. Turn that around. There's uh, flats on this end, a big one and a little one. So let me try this bigger one right here. Widen the hole. Hey, it's drywall. Mm -hmm. So I'll stick this in here and uh, it doesn't quite want to go. Well, that's, <coughs> that's asking for um, my other tool. This is my persuader tools. All right, so. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Then all you need is, where did I drop it? I dropped it. Uh, you just need the mounting screw. All right. So you can mount something on there. I would suggest that uh, you wouldn't be mounting a um, shelf with this but you might be doing something like a picture and that that's a beautiful picture right there so you put that screw in there first and then you tighten that puppy down and on the inside of course it's going to spread that thing out these are they're great i've used lots of them in the past probably use some in the future but again you have to know what its rate capacity is, and that rate capacity is for this, this direction, right? Okay, so that's the insert type, typical of this. And they come in lots of different sizes. Let's and look at so uh, some that go into 
and sometimes through the drywall. And I, I admit a bias on this, I really do, because I'm going to show you some here that I, I really like. It's uh, from a particular uh, company. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is this one. This one right here. It's rated at 75 pounds, right? Once again, up and down. And it will not go in where there is a stud. It only goes into the drywall. And guess what? You don't need that. Because these are self-drilling. Let me get one here. Self-drilling. And I'm going to put it the same, same place over here that I know there's a pipe back there because it's pretty short. Let's see what happens. So you decide where you want this thing and you just start doing this. Until it finally embeds itself with these great big threads right there. And then you have a screw just like before. Goes in, screws in. And the interesting thing about this, I don't know if you can hear the pop. Um, get this down here tighter. So it's nice and flat. Is that when you screw this in and it says, oh, I'm in there really well. Let's see if I can do this so you can hear it. It has an indicator that this little puppy is in there well. So a little quiet here. Hear that? That indicated that this thing just did... Ooh, I lost it, I lost it. Uh, just did this. It snapped right here. And it partially then bends over to the point where it gives you a little bit more um, holding power. Right? So it's got an audible indicator when this thing is fully tightened down. Now, as I said, this is pretty short, so I didn't really have to worry about, even though I knew there was a pipe back there, because it's short enough that it doesn't hit it. Let's see if I can turn it around. Yeah, do I have it? Yeah, there, you can just, you can just see it right there. So it didn't, didn't hit the pipe. Now maybe if the pipe were over this way, the guy that put the pipe in didn't drill the, the hole uh, dead center, or he was over this way. Even if this hit that pipe, it's plastic. It, it won't drill a hole through that pipe. Unlike the big that you just blindly did. Okay, so that comes from um, this company, Easy Anchor. Um, they make a lot of different types, and this one is strictly for drywall. But what if I wanted something like this that was over here? I needed to put a hanger over here. They also make one that's made out of metal, and it's specifically designed to be able to go in where there's a stud, and it would match this. All right? So I could have one of those over here. The plastic type over here. I got a whole series series of these to hold up lots of different things. I really like these. Okay, continuing on. Here's another type that um, we've been using for years. I know I've used them for years. It's a toggle type, right here. You have to drill a big hole, and and I I try to do it. Try to do it with my screwdriver. I can't quite get it big enough because this has to go through the hole. Goes through the hole and then once it's pushed all the way through, boom, it opens up. And that gives you, right, that gives you a lot more pulling power, spreads the load out. 
And so if you're putting in like a shelf, this would definitely be a, a much better thing because the cantilevered weight of the shelf that wants to pull this out would be spread across the, the drywall. So the bigger these things are in the back, once you get them in, more more hold you have. But you have to drill a big hole to be able to get these things through. And they come in different sizes. This is uh, a 70 pound right here. Yeah. They even tell you you can put it in hollow block like concrete or cement blocks. So 70 pounds um, drywall load. A little bit smaller. But you have to drill a hole. And furthermore, this is a kind of an inconvenience is that you have to put the screw through the load and then put this on. Then push it through the hole. All right, so it's a little awkward this way. And then even <laughs> even more disconcerting if you're a cheapskate like me is you only get to use this once because once you push this thing through that hole dude you can't retrieve it because let's say we had it up like this right so I've, I've got my load secured but I want to take this load off and put a new one on can I reuse this no because as soon as I unscrew the screw to get the load off, this falls down behind. So it's a one-time deal. You use it once and you're done. And you got to have a big hole. Then you got to fill a big hole when you remove it and the thing falls so, down in the back. Coming back to these, this is my go-to right here. This is also from Easy Anchor. They make lots of stuff. This is also from Easy Anchor, and this is rated, this one here is 100 pounds down, right? But it has the ad, uh, advantage of being a toggle type, just like I showed you. Um, the toggle meaning that this thing will flip open. Once you get it in, it will flip open, and then it holds on the back. So you've got the, the um, pulling power spread across. Let me show you. These drill themselves. It's one of the things I really like about them. So you decide where you want to go. Well, let's see what happens here. I'm going to do this again. I just hit that pipe, I think. Oh my gosh, I did. So I can't actually put that there, huh? I have to move it up or down. That's why you need to know where the pipe is. All right, I'm going to put one in here and show you some stuff in just a little bit. But first, I want to hit the last of these is that there are a number of other kinds of toggle. Uh, here's one. Now you'd say, well, that's too big. I can't get that in there. Yes, you can. These, these type right here, you just bend this. Right? You have to have a hole first, but you bend this, and you can push it through that hole. And then it expands in the back, and now you have something you can put your, put your picture or whatever you want to hang on here. The challenge on this one, of course, is it could fall down here behind the wall before you even got to use it because I have to put my load on here and then I have to do something like put a nut on it to hold it and then I'd have to cut it if I didn't want all this sticking out. Is this good? Yeah, actually there's, there's um, the one picture of the super, me super mega holder is like this, only they use a pivoting area here and two pieces of, usually two pieces of plastic. One, one form has one. And so you can snap off the stuff at, at the right place. 
right? You don't have all this sticking out here. But this kind of a toggle, which is the same thing I just showed you here, this kind of a toggle, holds a lot of weight, really does, but you gotta have a big hole. And you can only use it one time because you can't get, you can't get this out to reuse it. So I come back to these guys. All right, let's see what else I had here. Um, also, there's a number of different t uh, types um, like this. Now this one's way too big for drywall, but they do make them in shorter um, versions here. And you have to know: Do I have half inch? What kind of drywall thickness do I have in order to, to know what the body length of this is? But it also uses a type of toggle once um, Because when I screw this thing in it's going to pull this down Which is going to flare this out and give me more surface on, on the back more pull on the back So these have been around for a long time as a matter of fact this one here cost me 45 cents about 35 40 years ago <laughs> came from Nigel Hardware, which has been out of business for about 35 or 40 years. So that's the, the general types. I'm going to show you something here that a number of people have asked me about why I like these kinds. They come in 60, 75, and 100 pound rating. Um, but I like these because if you put them in correctly, you can get them out. A lot of these you can't you can't get out easily or you have to chop the drywall away to get it out so let me show you that in a close-up because as I said in my previous video a number of people have, have not understood how to do this but before I do that you're probably wondering what in the heck was that baggie full of water for well let me show you something Let's say that you want to put a series of anchors across because you're going to hang a whole bunch of uh, small pictures or one great big picture that has a maybe a 20 inch span or something, you know, between the one corner of it and the other corner of it. So you need to put in two or sometimes more of these anchors and then they, they need to be on a horizontal line here so you don't have your picture going this way or that way. And you don't have any high-tech stuff. You don't have a level. You don't have diddly. Well, there's two ways that you can use <clears throat> to make sure that you're reasonably level from one over here to maybe another one over here 20, 30 inches away. And the first way is a piece of string. Actually, both ways are a piece of string. Um, so, you've decided where you're going to put your first anchor, how high your picture is going to be. And then you just stick something on, on that first one that you put in. Take a piece of string and run it down to the floor. Right? And then make a little knot or something on the string so that now you know what the length is. Because maybe you didn't have one of these to actually measure it. You only had a 12 inch ruler. Right? So piece of string pulled down to the floor and then you can go over <clears throat> over to wherever the next place is that you need which you're going to have to measure yeah how are you going to do that guess what you go on the back of your picture whatever it is and you use a piece of string to measure okay the left one is here and the right one is this far away so the piece of string will get you the up and down all right, so it's level and a piece of string will also get you the distance if you use it as the measuring device on the back of your picture or whatever you're hanging. But I wanted to give you something even more high tech. So you take your piece of string at your first anchor and then you run it way out, maybe 10 feet, however far you can. You'll need some help for this with this too. And then you take your baggie right here. And you have your friend on the end of your 10, 8 foot string. Use that to identify when the string is level with the liquid. Yeah. I know, who's going to do that? It's a lot easier just to measure down to the floor and then measure over as far as you need to go. But you can amaze your friends with this. Hey, look. He's using a spirit level. That's what you call those things. Okay, 
So now the mystery of why you need a baggie with some colored spring in or colored water in it. Okay, onward to the top secret piece of how in the world you can use these and get them out without destroying without destroying your drywall, sheet rock, whatever you want to call it. Okay, here comes the top secret methodology for hopefully being able to get the uh, drywall toggle type easy anchor um, out of the wall without destroying the wall. So you can reuse it again or, uh, or just get it out of the way. Because once you've got them on the drywall, it's really hard to cover over them. You have to bang them to get them down below and you know patch the hole and all that stuff. So I'm going to uh, drill one of these things in. And I'll be right back. Okay, I have it drilled in and I want you to notice something. There's a little detent right there on the toggle and you have to work your way through that. So it'll take a little bit of a pressure to push this thing because it's going to hit that part right there. See that? And it's going to push this toggle back away from this little detent. So I'm going to do that right now. push this back in and you can do that by screwing it in you see how that gave way boom so I'm now in and you also notice that the toggle pushed all the way back along that little groove right there right? But it also has gotten this so that the screw is now in the center of the toggle. Right there. So at this point, <clears throat> I can pull this out. I can, I can put my load on it. Let's call this the load. Don't have to at this point, but I will. So I put uh, this through the load. Put this back in here so that I can get this to start picking up the toggle. Now, again, you're going to be pushing this through a, th a hole and it's effectively, it's, it's just widening the, th the threads in the little toggle. See how I'm going through there? Eventually it gets a bit easier and you just keep going with this and eventually when we get up here to the load, because I could have had a, a thicker load than this. This is the thing I'm using as the load. So once I get this up here where it's actually contacting the load, watch what happens to the toggle. All right, the toggle then starts moving toward the back of the drywall. <clears throat> depending on how thick the load was as to how far I'm going to have to screw this thing in against the load to bring the toggle up so that it now contacts the back of the wall and I get my full rating on my weight because the toggle is distributing the load across this way. I didn't want it that way, that's for sure. That's why I know the up and down arrows will get the toggle in the right position. But the lettering on the on the uh, screw head will tell me which way is this thing up, right? And I want it this way. All right. So far, so good. That got me um, an anchor that's going to hold pretty well. But now later on, I want to take it out. All right. So I start unscrewing it from the load and pretty obvious the toggle is moving back. <laughs> it's going loose, right? I keep doing that until I can get the screw completely out. And eventually I can pull the screw out leaving the toggle. 
And notice how it kind of fell over a little bit, right? Well, if I've got this in the upright position, when I try to unscrew this, right, unscrew the, the anchor itself, you can see it's going to try to stay that way. And I can't pull this out. I can't unscrew this. Right? So, so how do I get it out? After you pull that screw out, take a little piece of wire and go like this at an angle like that. Push it through the hole. Just keep pushing. And it'll lock it down almost in the same position it was when you first put it in. Then you can unscrew this because it will stay in that in that position. Yep. Now if you didn't put it in and you don't know which side is up other than that it is in the right position as far as the toggle is concerned. It's up and down because the arrows on here show up and down. Let's, let's put this the other way around. Let's say this thing is up, that's up like that and unfortunately whoever put this in didn't didn't put it in. They, they may have put the arrows in right, right, but they didn't do the uh, position correctly. This time when you try it, if you meet resistance right there on the upside, go to the downside. Yep, that's how you get them out.